Hey guys, today we're going to understand the shoulder complex. So you have four joints. You have the scapulothoracic joint, the SC joint, or the sternoclavicular joint, the AC joint, the acromioclavicular joint, and the glenohumeral joint. So the scapulothoracic joint it is pseudo because it's, it's kind of made up. It just kind of is a way to describe two different joints and combine them together. And that's a combination of the SC and the AC. The sternoclavicular joint is a saddle joint. That's because in one plane, it's convex um, arthrokinematics. And then in the other plane, it's concave arthrokinematics. And then you have the AC joint. It's a plane slash gliding joint, so it kind of slides on each other like this. Um, and then the glenohumeral joint is ball and socket joint. So now we're going to go over the arthrokinematics of each one. And we're going to start with the SC joint, or the sternoclavicular joint. And that's the complicated one because it's a saddle joint and it moves differently in the joint depending on which plane you're talking about. So in the frontal plane, um, when you do elevation of the SC joint or depression of the SC joint, it moves like a ball and socket. So it's going to roll up and slide down. Or for depression, it's going to roll down and slide up. And then it switches. So from the clavicle being convex to the clavicle being concave. And then it's going to roll and slide forward and then roll and slide backwards for, so roll and slide forward, that's um, for protraction. And then roll and slide backwards, that's for retraction at the SC joint. So it moves in the frontal plane and the transverse plane, but it also moves um, along its own long axis when the AC joint does upward rotation, um, it yanks on this conoid ligament, which is off of the coracoid process. That's where the conoid ligament and it attaches on the back, um, on the other side of the clavicle. And so when this swings out and, and uh, rotates this way, it's going to yank on the, the back of the clavicle and it's going to posteriorly tilt it. And so it's, the clavicle is going to come and then it's going to posteriorly tilt. And that happens in order to get our arm all the way up above our head. And then at the AC joint, which is right here, um, those are the ones, it's a plane joint. So kind of the ends are slapped like this together. And so um, for upward rotation, um, to get your arm all the way above your head, it's going to roll and slide up. For downward rotation, it's going to roll and slide down. For internal rotation of the scapula, it's going to roll and slide forward. For external rotation, it's going to roll and slide backwards. And then for an anterior tilt or a posterior tilt, it's just going to be a spin with a medial lateral axis. Glenohumeral joint is right here or right here between the glenoid and the humeral head and that's going to be just like a regular ball and socket so you just apply the convex concave rule and so for abduction it's going to be a roll up and a slide down um, for external rotation it's going to be a roll backwards and a slide forwards or in other words it's a roll posterior slide anterior and then opposite for internal rotation. And then for flexion and extension, it's primarily going to be a spin um, in that medial lateral axis. Scapulothoracic joint, again, it's a pseudo joint. It's kind of made up because um, anything that this does is just a combination of what the SC, jo SC joint does and what the AC joint does. So, for example, for scapulothoracic protraction, it's going to want the scapula to move all the way around the ribcage. And then the AC joint does a little bit of internal rotation to help with that. So it's going to be SC joint protraction and AC joint internal rotation for protraction. And then the opposite for retraction. And then to get the arm all the way above the head, it's going to be a, so scapulothoracic upward rotation. 
it's going to be a combination of SC elevation and AC upward rotation. Um, and then opposite for downward rotation.